Hey guys, Twisted Maxi here. Today I've got a video for you that is frankly way overdue on my part. It's regarding a mod I released back in August of 2019 called Tool. Many of you are probably familiar with it by now from either gallery downloads or other YouTubers, but if you aren't, Tool stands for Takes Objects Off Lot. And as that name implies, that was really my only intention when I created it. But as simmers that are frankly way more creative than I will ever be have shown me, Tool can be used for so much more than that. And so I really wanted to take the feedback from how I saw the community using my mod and use that to revisit some of the old features as well as add new ones that will hopefully get people to the result they're looking for with less effort and less time. So if you'll sit tight, we'll go through all the features of Tool, both old and new. So the first thing to remember is that even though it may seem counterintuitive, um, Tool actually happens in live mode. And the reason for that is because when we're in build by mode, it works fine for placing objects, but there's actually a hard coded restriction that prevents us from dragging objects off the lot. And that's not something we can mod. Um, in fact, the camera itself is actually tied to the lot in this mode as well. So we do everything with tool in live mode because that restriction's not there and that lets us place objects exactly where we want them without that camera restriction. So in order to use tool, you'll actually need to have testing cheats true turned on. Um, if you don't want to type this every single time, I actually have a mod called always testing. And if you download that with tool, then tool will always be enabled by default. So just keep that in mind if you're finding it too tedious to keep typing in that cheat. Originally, Tool only had three options. They were the elevate, move, and rotate commands. And if I'm being honest, the only reason they existed was because once you took an object off the lot, obviously you couldn't use build buys tools to manipulate that object anymore. Um, they're actually going to be the three most difficult options to use as well. So we'll go ahead and go through those first because they are the core of the mod. But if you're feeling overwhelmed, just know that as soon as we get through these, the tool actually gets a lot easier to use. So of the three original options, um, Elevate is definitely the easiest. You just shift click the bed, click on Tool, go to Elevate. It brings up this Elevate box. And I've never told anybody this, but the ranges on most of Tool's dialog boxes are completely arbitrary, you can put in whatever you want. Um, but the reason I put a suggestion there is so that somebody doesn't type 100 and then wonder where their object went while it's hovering 100 meters above their lot. Um, but so if we wanted to move this object up by one, we would just click on elevate, go to one, and you can see it did so. But if we wanted to bring it back down by half, you can actually put in a negative 0 0.5 and you can see that that worked perfectly. You can do whatever decimal you want. The smallest that you would probably notice is 0 0.01. Anything else is just probably too tiny, but that is the Elevate. So the next feature we're gonna cover is a little more complex than Elevate, but it's the one that simmers seem to be having the most fun with, and it's the Rotate option. I think the reason people are having so much enjoyment out of it is because EA actually restricts you to the horizontal axis when you rotate, but Tool can actually do all three axes. Um, in order to use this, you're going to want to be familiar with the degrees of a circle. If you're rusty with that, it's best to start with the typical numbers like 0, 45, 90, 180. Those are going to give you all the right angle rotations. So if we wanted this bed completely vertical, we would just do 90. And you can see it, it lifted the bed right up. If we wanted the bed to be upside down, we can hit it with another 90 so that it's now rotated 180 degrees in the same direction. And to show you what I mean, if we wanted this back the way it was, we can type in 180 and it'll flip it right around. Now you can do 360 and it will technically rotate it, but you're not going to notice the difference because that's a full circle. So you can do whatever number you want. If you just wanted to lift it up a little bit, you could do 10 and you'll see that it just tilts it in that direction. And of course, if you want to go in the opposite direction, you can do negative 10. Um, what I normally do if I pick the wrong way is if I went 10 in this direction 
and I meant to go 10 in the other direction, then I just add it together in my head real quick and do negative 20, and that'll put you where you originally wanted it. It's a little bit faster than trying to undo or zero out what you did before making the adjustment again. Um, so there's a couple of caveats to rotate. There's a few objects in the game that do not have all three axes. Uh, those are mostly debug objects and some plants. So if you go to rotate those on um, an axis that they don't have, it'll actually squeeze that object together. And sometimes that might be desirable, but in most cases you're going to see that and go, that's not what I wanted. So if that happens, just remember that there is a shift click tool options and you can hit undo, which will undo that rotation for you. So you can actually rotate objects with sims in them. So if we have the sim come over here and sleep, then you can still shift click the object and click rotate and we'll change the axis to this one and we'll do 45 degrees. And somehow the sim does not fall out, but it, the object is still completely usable in most cases, um, as long as the object is still close enough to the surface. Um, if you lift them up, then sometimes the sim can get stuck in the object that you're using. You'll have to move the object back to uh, a normal location, or you can reset the sim to um, take care of it. So the next feature is move, which is definitely the trickiest option of tool. Um, the reason for this is it's just kind of unwieldy and there's no other way to do it with as much precision as this offers. So that's why the option is still there. Um, so we click on move and you can see that a grid comes up. This is actually optional and you can simplify it in tool settings, but by default it's turned on and the labels for the axes actually denote which way is positive. So this is the positive x-axis and this is the positive y-axis. So if we wanted to move this bush to right here, we would do 1, 2 on the x and 1 on the y. So 2, 1, and you'll see that it snaps right there. Um, there's actually an option in tool settings that lets you snap camera on move. So if we turn that on, you can see that when I move it 1, 1, the camera actually moves to where it went. That's to help you not lose objects as easily, but whenever I'm trying to show you how the grid works, I have it off so that um, you can more clearly see where it moved to. So we click on tool, move, and let's say we wanted to go negative. We'd go negative three on the y-axis and negative two on the x-axis. So we go negative two, negative three and you can see it ends up right there. There is actually one setting that affects all of tools move functions, and that is under change settings, snap to terrain. It's on by default, but I'm gonna turn it off real quick to show you what happens without it. So if we move this bush by 70 on the X axis, you'll see that it moves the camera to where it went, but you can't actually see it because it's actually at the original level that it was meaning it's way under the ground right now. But if we go back and uh, change that setting to active, so it'll now snap to the terrain of wherever the new location is. And so if we move this push by the same amount, 70, zero, then you'll see that it moved and moved the object up to the new level. So even though this ground is higher than where it was, it's still flush with the floor. Um, the reason you would want to turn this off is if you're moving a group of elevated objects, um, you might want to move them manually because on the snap to train, even the stuff that's above will be forced down to the ground floor. Another option that you might find useful with the move tool is that you can shift click the ground and go to tool options, change settings, and there's actually two options there called set move X and move Y collar. So you can set the X to let's say orange and we can set the Y to pink 
And if we go to move objects, you'll see that the grid is now orange and pink instead of the original green and red. So it's just a, a visual perk. Um, if there's certain colors that are better for you, then you can just pick those and set those as a default. Those settings do save even if you close out the game. A really quick example of why we want to avoid the move dialog as much as possible is that some of the lots in EA's worlds are not aligned to the world axis. And so if we click on this object and click move, you can see that the lot is actually diagonal to the grid that we're going to move on. And it can make it really difficult to see exactly how much you should move by in order to get the object where you want it. So another thing you should be careful with is if an object is slotted to a parent, for example, chairs to a dining room table, you should only ever move the parent object. So we would move the table one one and you can see it works fine and it takes the chairs with it. But what happens if we try to move the chair, even by a tiny amount, it just completely disappears. And the reason for that is because it's using the parent object's coordinates, so it can't be moved on its own properly. Okay, so those are the three core features of Tool, and as promised, they're also the most complex. It's all downhill from here, so if you're still with me, thank you. I want to get into why all these features I'm about to show you exist, and it goes back to seeing Simmers use Tool in so many ingenious ways. For example, rotating a thousand different objects and combining them into this absurd masterpiece. Um, being the creator of Tool, I know how long that actually takes, and it's irritating to me <laughs> to know that they had to spend so much time to get the result they wanted. And so I wanted to find a way to reduce that as much as possible. Um, I think by far move is the most tedious one to work with. So I really wanted to reduce how often the numerical move was necessary. And one of the oldest things that I added to do that was that you could actually shift click an object and click on tool, toggle active object, and you can see it highlighted it. And what that does is it marks that for tool use later so the way it originally worked was you would shift click a ground and click tool options and there would be an option under here that said move active object but that's not here anymore and we don't do it that way because frankly it was too many clicks and it sucked. Um, I really wanted to reduce that as much as possible so what we have now is a mode where once you've activated an object tool sees that and instead of bringing up interactions, when you click the ground, it actually just moves the object for you. So that works anywhere that's pretty much not a sim or another object. You can click on the wall, or you can click on the roof, and it all works fine. Um, but I wanted to go a step farther. I wanted to make sure that you could do as much as possible while you're in this mode so that it's as convenient as possible. Who wants to shift click an object every time they want to switch? So instead what you can do is just click on another object and it will switch that object to active. So you can just click and switch, click, switch. And you can do that as many times as you like. As long as there's at least one active object, then it will allow you to keep switching between objects and move them with a click of a button. Another feature is that if you wanted to move more than one object at once, let's say you've got all these bushes in the perfect position, then you can actually hold down Alt and click on these objects to add them to the group. And then if you wanted to move them, you just click once and all the bushes are moved respective to what their original position was. Alternatively, if you have way too many objects to select individually, um, another way that you can select a group is to shift click the ground, go to tool options, set grouping box, and then you want to go to the opposite corner, tool options, set grouping box again, and you can see it's created kind of a square around the objects that we want to select, and you shift click the ground, tool options, toggle group. 
and so it's grabbed everything inside those bounds. Um, this will actually only work for whatever level that you selected. So if there's stuff above the floor, it won't grab those. And let's say that we didn't actually want to grab that tree. Well, you can hold down Alt and click on it, and it will remove it from the group. So we'll say we want to move these bushes over here, and there it goes. Then let's say we wanted to take three of the bushes out. Then we can do that, and then move the rest over here. So it's really quite easy. Um, the way the set group markers work are once they're set for a certain zone, they stay there. Um, you can hide them if you want, but if you wanted to, say, make a new group, then the way it works is uh, it alternates which marker was set last. So you can kind of see that, okay, we've got these two here, but if I shift click, it's going to remove one of those markers and move it to the new location. And then you can see that this one stayed, but we can click one more time to move it. So another issue that you might run across is that with certain objects, particularly large ones, it might be kind of difficult to get an object exactly where you want it with this feature. Let's say you click here, but it's not quite right. What happens is you end up doing this cat and mouse of moving it away and then clicking again. And you have to do that several times until it just happens to end up exactly where you wanted it. Or you can do the numerical move feature, which again is annoying. So what I've done, and I'm, I'm actually quite proud of it, if I can uh, self-praise a little bit, I'm really happy with how it turned out, is a feature I called Gravity Pull. And the way it works is, let's say we wanted to put this bush centered on this pole right here. What we can do is we can click close enough, and instead of doing the cat and mouse, what we can do is we can actually just alt-click the ground in the direction we want the bush to be moved. And the farther away we click from the object, the more it will move. So what that enables us to do is, once we've got it about right, we can click really close to the bush to move it in these little micro adjustments until it's perfectly centered. And believe it or not, that's actually still faster than trying to open a uh, move box and guess how many numbers to move it by. So I'm, again, I'm, really pleased with how this came out. I think it'll greatly reduce how many times somebody has to use the numerical move feature when they're trying to get something just right. And that looks good to me, so we're just going to click this once, and that deactivates it. That happened to be the last active object we had selected, so we're actually back in normal mode, where we can click all of our interactions and continue about our Sims game. Another feature of Gravity Pull that I'm really happy with is the fact that it works on objects on the wall as well. So let's say you wanted to nudge this uh, a little bit to the right, then you can actually alt click over here on the wall and it'll pull it in whatever direction you click. So we can move it up, down, or to the left, exactly where we want it. And in case you were curious, you can actually use the gravity pull feature on groups of objects as well. Uh, just keep in mind that the more objects that are in a group, the more work has to be done per click. So if you have a particularly large group of objects, it will take a few seconds for the game to update. Okay, I'm going to circle around now to the tool interaction commands. And the reason we're doing that is there's actually one on there we haven't looked at yet called scale. Uh, this one just came in the latest update, and uh, the only reason it wasn't there originally was because I assumed that simmers would just scale and build by, and then move their object off lot afterwards. Um, obviously, that is not all that tool is used for, and so I figure there's been a lot of opportunities where an object would have been perfect for something, but it was a little too large or too small for what the simmer was trying to do. So I thought it was important to have this precision scaling that, unlike EA's scale, which works in intervals, uh, will actually let you put in 0.01 if you want. So if you want a really tiny statue, you can have a really tiny statue. So we'll just go ahead and shift-click the ground and hit undo. And 
If you want this to be twice as big, you can actually set it to two. And if you want it to be half as big, you can actually set it to 0 0.5. And if you haven't noticed, it's not additive. So one will always be the default size. Anything less than one will be smaller and anything larger than one will be bigger. Um, there's a range on here, like all my other ones. Uh, again, you can put in whatever you want, but I feel like anything above 25 is probably excessive. So I would probably stick to that range if I were you. And that is the scale command. So there's one feature of tool that I feel obligated to show you. There's been a few different tutorials on it. I believe Nando was the first one to come up with it. Um, but it's to replace the windows in apartments with ones that you like. And the first thing you're going to do is shift click on a window, go to tool, click on toggle active object, and just click somewhere in your house to drag it in. Then we're going to go to build by and we'll just grab that window, delete. Then we're going to build a wall one block away from where you want the window to go. And we'll select a window. We'll just grab this one looks good. And then we'll exit build by. We'll click on the window, go to tool and move. And we're going to look at our grid because remember wherever the label is, is the positive. So you can see X up here, meaning this way would be positive X. So we actually need to go negative X by one to get it onto this wall. So we'll do negative one, zero. And there you go. The window is perfectly in place on the wall. You can see right through it just as if it was there to begin with. We'll go back to build by, delete that wall, and we're done. One final highlight of Tool is that when Eco Lifestyle came out, there was an early access version that actually let you build out in this balcony. And unfortunately, EA had too many bugs with it, and they removed that feature when it finally released to the public. But since Tool doesn't care where the build by boundaries are, we can still build on that balcony as we hoped. Um, we just have to use Tool to do it. So I'm just gonna grab this object and place it about right here. That looks pretty good, but we'll just pull it out a little bit with the gravity pull, and then we'll grab the coffee table, place it right here, maybe move it over, and then we'll finally grab the chair, place it right there, shift click, go to rotate, 180, and then we'll gravity pull it out of the wall. That looks good to me. We'll unclick. And it's done. Um, I'm sure you all can do way better balconies than I can. And that's probably not the best furniture to be using outside. But for demonstration purposes, that will work well enough. And in case you're curious, yes, Sims can actually use the furniture out on the balcony. Um, so no worries there. You just have to use tool to place the objects and then you're good to go. Okay, that's it. Hopefully this has equipped you to jump right in with tool. The update containing all these features is now live. You can always grab the latest version from twistedmexi.com. If you do have any questions, you can usually reach me by Twitter or Discord. I'm also on Patreon if you'd like to support me. I do appreciate all of the support and so again, thank you to all of my existing patrons that make this possible. Thanks everyone, and I hope you have a good day.